Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Ready Tech, and in this video I'll be showing you the most important tips and tricks for your Realme 3 Pro. By the way guys, I will be posting a dedicated video for the best features where I'll be showing you all the features offered by this phone. So definitely check out that video, link will be in the description. Now with that said, first I want to show you the overall user interface of this new Color OS 6. So Color OS 6 has been the major new update for all the Realme and Oppo phones and a lot of things have changed. So this is a notification area and these are your toggles and you get a bigger brightness slider just like on MIUI phones. Personally I do like it and over here you have a toggle for auto brightness. Moving on next this is the recent tabs page and it has the Android Pie style to it. I guess even Oppo previously had that. Anyway whenever we press the volume buttons this is a new interface. We get a very big volume progress bar and we can click over here to change the sound profile to regular to vibration. And to silent mode and you can also click over here to change volume controls for individual category so that's all pretty cool and this is the settings page settings page doesn't look all that different from the previous color os 5 but even this is pretty good now with that said first i'll show you how you can use the new android pie based gestures as you can see it still has three button navigation bar so if you want to try out the new gestures or the new navigation bar you need to go to settings then select convenience aid then select navigation keys from here select the third option or the fourth option. I prefer this layout and once you do that, this is how the new navigation bar looks like. You just have two buttons, back button and home button. And home button acts like a regular home button like you can click it to go home. Back button is the same once again. And for recent apps, you can swipe up and these are your recent apps. There is also another cool gesture where we can swipe on the home button to the left, that's the blank area, to quickly switch between these applications. Now this new navigation bar might be a little hard for you and it might take some time to get used to it. But once you get used to it, it is very convenient. So this is the new Android Pie based navigation bar. Definitely give it a try. Now for some reason if you don't want a navigation bar and if you want to use gestures, this phone also has that. To enable that go to settings and convenience aid. Once again to the navigation keys. Now select swipe up gestures. Now these are all the different gestures we have and I personally like the first one. Now to go back you can swipe from the left or right side so I can do that or this to go back. You can swipe from the center to go home and you can swipe and hold for recent apps. These are the same gestures that you can find even on the OnePlus devices. Now as you can see there is no navigation bar and now the display definitely looks much more immersive. Now you might wonder how to trigger Google Assistant. So there's a nice little shortcut for that. To enable that go to settings, smart and convenient and then enable this toggle. Now once you do that you can press and hold the power button for like half a second to trigger Google Assistant. How was the weather? And as you can see, it really works very well. Currently in Hyderabad, it's not. Now, if you press and hold the power button for more than half a second, like three seconds to be exact, it'll give you the power options. Now, going on next, I'll show you some super handy screen gestures. Once again, to enable that, go to settings, then convenience aid. Now, from here, select gestures and motion and select screen of gestures. So, first, enable it and you get additional options. First we have double tap the screen on. Just enable it and once your display is off, you can double tap the screen to wake it up. There you go. Now if you're using your phone with face unlock feature, you can simply double tap your phone. Display lights up and it sees your face and immediately unlocks the phone. So it's a super cool feature and it can give you a much more immersive experience while unlocking the phone if you have this double tap to wake feature. Next we have draw O for camera. Just enable it and in the lock screen or when the display is off, you can draw a no to open the camera application. This is a very nice shortcut and with just that, you can start taking pictures. Next we have draw V for flash. So once enabled, you can draw a V gesture to turn on the flash. There we go. You can turn off the flash by pressing the power button. On OnePlus, we can toggle the flash using V gesture. But on this phone, we have to press the power button to turn off the flash. Next we also have some music controls where we can draw a less than or a greater than or a two lines and do different actions. So definitely do give it a try and if you want your own custom gesture to quickly open an application, you can use the settings from here. Now going on next, I'll show you some camera related gestures. Now go to settings and from here make sure you enable this toggle, fingerprint shooting. And once you're done, you can touch your fingerprint scanner to take pictures. So there you go. This can be really useful while taking selfies. Next, if you enable this toggle, touch to take a photo, you can take pictures by simply touching the preview area. Once again, this can be really useful for taking selfies and just like that. Next, we have a gesture to take photo. This works only for selfies. So for the front camera, if you want to take a selfie, just show your palm and your phone will take a picture in two seconds. Once again, it's really convenient to take pictures. 
Now going on next, this one also has super slow motion, that's 960 FPS, so if you want to give it a try. In the camera application, you need to click this button over here, then select slow mo, and you can change the frame rate from here. Just select 960 FPS and then you can shoot video in 960 FPS at 720p resolution. Now going on next, if you are someone who uses face unlock feature, I would recommend you to change few settings. For that, go to settings, then select security, then select fingerprint, face and password, and then select face, enter your password. Once you're done, these are the settings that you see. Now once you're here, make sure you enable this toggle. So what this does is, in low lighting conditions, it increases the screen brightness to see your face clearly and then unlock your phone very quickly. So it really helps in low lighting conditions. Now going on next, if you select this particular option by swiping up, once you try to unlock your phone, even if face unlock works, you have to swipe up the lock screen to unlock the phone. Whereas if you have this option enabled or if you select this particular option directly with your face, face unlock works automatically and unlocks the phone. You don't have to swipe the lock screen. I'm a bit lazy, so I'm just gonna stick with this. Now going on next, if you don't want face unlock to work if your eyes are closed, make sure you enable this toggle. Personally, I don't have any complaints, so I'm just gonna turn it off. This way, face unlock will be much faster. By the way guys, face unlock is always unsecure, like it's not as secure as the fingerprint scanner, so use it at your own risk. Now going on next, I'll show you how to take a screenshot. So to take a screenshot on this phone, you can press the volume down and power button both at the same time to take a screenshot. Now if this is a bit hard for you, we also have a gesture called three finger screenshot. You can swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. This feature is enabled by default, but for some reason, if that doesn't work for you, you need to go to settings, then select convenient aid, then select gestures and enable this toggle three finger screenshot. So once you do that, you can swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. Next, for some reason, if you want to record the screen on your phone, this is what you need to do. You need to go to the notification area, swipe down a bit, and there should be a toggle to record the screen. Now, as you can see, my phone doesn't have it. So to bring it up, this is what we can do. Click this button over here. Now we can see some extra toggles. We can also rearrange these toggles and we can also send it back. Now, in our case, I want to bring up this toggle and put it over here. And once it is done, click this button. Now to start video recording, I can simply go to the notification toggles and click this toggle. And I'll see this floating button that will start the video recording. This is just a button to stop video recording. Video recording has already started. And once you're done, click this button and that video will be saved in your gallery. Now going on next, this phone has an awesome feature called smart protection, which literally no other phone has. So if you want to give it a try, you need to first go to settings, then select security. In security, select personal information protection. Now, usually you have a lot of information on your phone, like contacts, call logs, messages, and so on. And all the applications try to use that application for marketing and stuff. So if you don't want to share your information with applications, you can use this feature. Now let's first enable it. Let's give it the permission. Now let's see which applications are trying to access your contacts. So all these applications are trying to access your contacts. Okay, it is okay if Facebook tries to read your contacts. Maybe it's trying to find your friends. But why does Amazon need your contact list? So I can simply turn on the toggle for this application. So from now on, Amazon won't have access to your contact list. Instead, it'll see an empty page. So this is the smart protection feature. And as far as I know, only this phone has it. Now for some very quick tips, if you're someone who wants to see the memory usage on the recent tabs page like this, this is what you need to do. First, go to settings, then select additional settings and scroll down and make sure you enable this toggle. Now this toggle is disabled by default. So whenever you go to the recent apps page, you don't see the memory usage over here. But once you enable it, you can find the memory usage on the recent apps page. In the same way, if you want to display battery percentage on the status bar, you need to go to settings, then select notification and status bar. From here, enable this toggle that says battery percentage to display battery percentage on the status bar. In the same way, if you want to see the network usage on the status bar, make sure you enable this toggle. Now let's say you're playing a game or watching a video. You might get a notification and it might show up in a big way over here. So if you don't want that to happen or if you don't want to see banned notifications while using the phone in the landscape mode in a full screen application like games or watching a video, just disable this toggle that says show banner notifications in full screen. So once you do that, you won't see banner notifications while you're using an application in full screen mode. That's basically while watching videos or playing games. Now going on next, this phone has a very unique feature called Wi-Fi tethering. So to access that, you need to go to settings, then select other wireless connections. From here, select Wi-Fi tethering. Now this feature shares your existing Wi-Fi connection to other devices. Let's say you're in an airport or a hotel and you're given internet access only to one device and you have multiple devices. So using this feature, 
you can share that single Wi-Fi connection to multiple devices. Honestly, if you travel a lot, this feature can be really useful. Now going on next, I'll show you how to record calls automatically on your phone. For that, go to settings, then select system apps. From here, select call, then select call recording, and then enable this toggle. Once you do that, all the calls will be recorded automatically on your phone. By the way guys, this feature is not available in all the countries. It's available in India, but might not be available in other countries. So if you can't find this feature, try using third party applications. So guys, now I'm going to conclude this video with some very important tips and tricks related to the home screen or the entire user interface of ColorOS. So this is your default launcher or home screen and you can create new home screens by just dragging an icon like that and swiping it to the right side corner and leaving it. Now a new home screen is created. Now if you want to delete a home screen, you just need to make it empty. Just click this icon and drag it to the left and now that new home screen has been deleted. Now on the leftmost side of your home screen, this is called a smart assistant. Now the smart assistant is just a page with all your widgets and contact information and call logs. So if you don't like it and if you want to disable it, this is what you need to do. Go to settings and then select smart services, then disable this toggle. Once you do that, you won't find the smart assistant page on the home screen. Now going on next, this is the default launcher and it does come with an app drawer. You just need to swipe up for all your applications. Now for some reason, if you don't want an app drawer, this is what you can do. Long press in an empty area, then go to settings. Then select home screen mode, then select the first option. And once you do that, when you go to the home screen, there is no app draw. Now these are the only two pages and when you do a swipe up, nothing happens. So once again, if you want to go back, go to settings, then select home screen mode and select the second option. Now we have the app draw. Now going on next, if you want to move multiple applications from one page to another at a time, you can do a pin gesture, then select all the applications that you want and then you can long press on any one of these icons just like that and then you can move all those applications at once. Now I'm just gonna take them to the next screen and then drop them and all these applications are placed over there. So it is that simple. By the way guys you can also press and hold on app icons to get some additional options. Personally I never use it but you might give it a try. Now these are your notification toggles and you also have something called quick settings. So whenever you see a small arrow on the top right corner of a toggle you can click over here to get extra options. So if you want to quickly switch between your Wi-Fi connection, instead of going to settings and doing all other stuff, you can simply go to your notification toggle area and then click over here and quickly switch your Wi-Fi network. Just like that. So guys, these are the most important tips and tricks for your Realme 3 Pro. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and definitely check out my video on the best features. Link is in the description. By the way guys, if you're planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description, it always helps the channel and if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off, have a nice day.